One of my favorite subjects, file fragmentation. Let's find out more and talk to Wes at the bench. Wes, I come to you a fragment of what I used to be. Oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> so we're talking about file fragmentation. What truly are some of the symptoms of file fragmentation? Because, I mean, we, we don't open up our PC and away we go and think to ourselves, you know, I better check for fragmentation. What are some symptoms of file fragmentation? Uh, this is another one of those things where the symptoms a lot of times are just going to be performance issues. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you have a lot of files, large files that you delete, um, traditional mechanical drives, the way they store them, what that's going to do is it's kind of like, the you know, when you delete a lot of files, what ends up happening is, think about a walkway with a, you know, like let's say brick mm -hmm. paver, step after, you know, just uh, all in line in a sequential fashion. Right. Uh, once you think about it, if we were to take out some of those brick pavers and now to walk down that walkway to get to the next paver, you'd have to kind of jump. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that that space that's in yeah. there is uh, what's known as fragmented space. Mm -hmm. The other thing too is that our files, uh, when they're stored on traditional mechanical drives, um, they when we first start our operating system, we first start using it. You know, a lot of times uh, your files are stored in a nice contiguous fashion. Right. However, when you start modifying files, when you start moving files, when you start shrinking files, if you will, just by adding normal use, you know, just normal use in files, uh, then what happens is uh, um, you, the files will not be stored in that contiguous fashion. The drive will look for the next available free space, and that free space could be at different points across the physical disks within uh, the hard drives themselves. So really just the symptoms will just be slow operating performance more than uh, anything. Creating those spaces between the brisks. Yeah. The bricks. The brisks. The brisks. Yeah. All right, we got food on them. Hey, I like barbecue. It's a so. new thing. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Okay. Any, anything else as far as, you know, what are the symptoms of it? No, that, that's, really, yeah. that's really it. Just a slow, slow performing drive, uh, slow performance in general. Okay, so then what causes that? Well, you know, uh, why, why, why aren't they just automatically just put the files next right next to each other? Well, just because the way the storage, okay. just the kind of the way the storage works, yeah. and um, you know, I kind of mentioned that you know a heavy, heavily utilized drive, normal operation, really, normal yeah. operation can cause it. This isn't something that somebody's doing wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, it is just something that we need to be aware of, and that's something that does happen, uh, especially when you have um, you know files that, or, or, or for instance, a drive that you store all your files on, mm -hmm. uh, maybe for. Or, um, you know, for performance reasons, you, you, you have a solid state drive for your operating That's system, steep, right? Yeah. So you, you want that to move uh, fast. Well, you don't have to defragment uh, the solid state drive just because the way they delete information. Right, right, but right, yeah. what, for instance, what a lot of people do and what I do is I'll store my data that's not really frequently accessed mm -hmm. on one of those traditional drives because you can get a huge like 10 terabyte drive right. uh, for cheap today compared to what you could for a solid state drive. So when that happens and you start to mod uh, modify those files, again, normal operations, heavy use, then what ends up happening is uh, you, your files just get fragmented. Oh, wow. You get those spaces between the bricks. The spaces, yeah. The, you the get, bricks. It is. <laughs> and, well, and when you delete a file, too, um, one of the things to keep in mind is that um, what it's doing is it's actually leaving what's known as fragmented free space. Mm -hmm. uh, see, the goal of a, uh, the ideal solution is that when files are stored, they're stored in a nice, sequential fashion. Right. Think about the uh, the older days when we actually used the pull-out file systems, right? Oh, yes. If you think about it, right, if you pulled out that drawer in that filing cabinet, right, and you grabbed a whole chunk mm -hmm. of folders and you pulled them out. hated me. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, you well, think about all that space that's there. Correct. And then you pull the drawer out farther and you remove a whole bunch of the folders from the back, right? Mm -hmm. Well, now you've got this space and in a filing cabinet, it'd just be easy. You know, we see the empty space, we just put a folder in there, right? Yeah. Drives, unfortunately, can't do that. So, again, it's just really going to boil down to just normal operation. Okay, so, so now that we know the, you know, the symptoms, the cause, mm -hmm. what are the solutions, or what is the solution? Well, the biggest solution there, it's been actually been in Windows for a while, and it's gone through a couple of name changes over the years. Uh, it used to just be called disk uh, defragmenter. Mm -hmm. um, 
don't let the name change, uh, you know, like confuse uh, you or anyone else. Um, again, it's just a fresh coat of paint over a, a utility that's been around a while. It doesn't mean it's the exact same utility. They certainly haven't done optimizations on it, but it's uh, the drive optimizer. Let me show you what I mean here. Okay. So uh, easiest way to get uh, to this is, uh, well, there's a couple of ways that you can do this. You can type in your instant search field. Mm -hmm. uh, you can type uh, Windows, and you can see it's kind of already filling it out. Windows administrative tools. Yes. Uh, we can launch it from inside of the Windows administrative tools here, and I know it's kind of hard to see. Let me uh, zoom in. So you can see defragment and optimized drives. Now, uh, it really, the instant search field is really good, too, because you can also just go ahead and you can t uh, just type in defragment or defrag, uh, and then you your defragment and optimized drives uh, mm -hmm. interface will come up here. Okay. Uh, and you'll notice that this is kind of a misnomer. This is a solid state drive, and it says it needs optimization where the do uh, where the data volume. Uh, it's saying that it doesn't, but essentially what you would do here is you'd come in here and you'd select the drive that mm -hmm. you want to defragment. Uh, and this one's saying that it's okay. Uh, again, it's a relatively new drive. I'd have to use this for quite a while uh, for the optimized drive utility to come to, to notice it and say, hey, we need to do something about it. But mm -hmm. the, the solution would be the same either way. Uh, again, I'm not going to run it on a solid state drive. And the reason I say that is because you only get so many rights to these NAND flash memory uh, right. chips that are in solid state drives. Drives, and right. if you're defragmenting them, first of all, you're not benefiting them because drive, solid state drives, the, the way they uh, do their delete and write operations are different than a traditional spinning drive. Um, and the other thing is, not only is it not beneficial to defragment a drive, it's actually harmful because uh, what you're doing is you're using, you're, you're per, uh, forming excessive writes that are unnecessary to begin with, mm -hmm. and you're, you could diminish the lifespan uh, of the solid state drives. Uh, but to do this, you can see here, yep. um, it says to analyze or right. optimize. Analyze just says, hey, well, let's check it out and see if you want to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to optimize it, uh, you can go ahead and opt. I'm just going to go ahead and click optimize. Analyze again says, let's go ahead and analyze it. And notice that it did, uh, we optimized it. Now it says 100% uh, space efficiency. Now Perfect. that happened really quick. And just again, kind of transparent on this, if uh, you know, if, if I wanted to show this, we'd have to literally do a lot of work on these drives, mm -hmm. maybe do some file operations on it to generate some fragmentation on here. But either way, the operation will be the same. Now, that's not the only way that you can do this. If I go ahead, I'm going to close down our optimized drive. You can also go down to the command prompt and do this. And I'm going to type CMD, Charlie Mike Delta here. And then I'm going to choose to, you can either, you can right click on it and run it as an administrator. Mm -hmm. Nice little uh, shortcut is to do control shift Enter, mm -hmm. uh, and that, that'll uh, elevate it to a uh, administrative command prompt, and we'll go ahead and say yes to the UAC, because to do this next command, you will have to be uh, an administrator. So let me just clear the screen here, give us a nice clean canvas, and what I'm going to do is defrag, uh, and I'm going to run, there's a couple of options. If you want to know what the options are, just do a defrag space forward slash question mark. It'll give you all the various options. And but there's a couple. Th there's quite a few. So just pay attention to the option that you want. I'm going to run um, defrag for uh, space forward slash A just for analyze and then space forward slash V for ver verbosity, verbose. Mm -hmm. uh, give me all the information. Uh, and then I'm going to point it to the drive that I want to uh, run it against. And in this case, it's that data drive that I showed you that we've really already optimized right. inside of the, the GUI based platform. But here we could run this and you'll notice that it says uh, that it's invoking uh, slab consolidation here. And then it's telling me, you know, what, uh, you know, a little bit of information about the volume, which is stored in the uh, uh, protected file on mm -hmm. the drive, so we can uh, uh, the operating system can identify it and identify what its free space is and use space. Mm -hmm. And then you can see it does say that um, it has 100% efficiency. If I wanted to go ahead and run this, then I could just say, all right, I'm going to I'm going to defrag space, and I could say for verbose again, just because I like to see what's going on, right. uh, and it'll print that information out to the uh, the command prompt here, mm -hmm. and then again we could just type uh, the drive letter here, and we could run it, and you'll notice again it, this is really really fast. Um, it's probably not going to be that fast, especially if you're talking about a 10 terabyte drive. But you can see some of the information here that it said average fragments per file one, right? Movable files and folders 17, unmovable files and folders. So uh, it really didn't do much. Uh, in this, but it does give you some good information. You can it see does. this is the master file table, so mm -hmm. uh, it optimizes your master file table because your master file table is where your operating system looks for pointers to figure out where these files even are. 
and sometimes you can have uh, some fragments in the master file table too. So uh, you'll see that it also tells us that, you know, any file fragments larger than 64 megs weren't included. Again, I'm not worried about that, but that's essentially how you can optimize your drive. So just remember, not doing anything wrong. It's part of normal operation. So fragmented drives are just something, you know, that people need to be aware of and expect it. And we've shown you a couple of tools. Well, it's pretty much the same tool, one from a GUI base and mm -hmm. one from the command prompt on how you can take care of file, uh, file fragmentation. Well, Wes, thank you for showing us about file fragmentation, symptoms, causes, and solutions. Appreciate it very much. Oh, you're welcome.